Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, on behalf of the Justice for Veterans, Atlanta Alliance, and the Melbourne family, uh, we come here today with the press conference to hopefully get some kind of resolution to what's been happening here with our son. We want to thank you for holding this press conference, uh, Ms. Melbourne. And uh, we know you got to leave tomorrow and go back home. And we pray that we God's speed will go with you as you go back home, you and your family. We're here to say to the officials of the Cab County, we want a speedy resolution to this here. We want, we want autopsies done now. We want all the necessary means to be taken care of right now so we can do this. We don't want to wait six months for her family to find out what happened. Yes. We want it done now. Now, a parent shouldn't have to come here and take their child back in bury. That should not have to happen. It should not have to happen. And I hard and I go out to the family uh, by doing that. We want to say this here to the sheriff. This parent, this family have not seen the sheriff. She has not even contacted the family and gave her condolences. We don't think that's right. That should not have happened. The young man was a veteran. He, he went and he served his time for our country. He should be treated better than that. Several people dropped the ball on this here. Ms. Melvin, I'm sorry for that. Several people have dropped after what you have told me. Uh, your son been sick a long time. He should have gotten a lot of help from different people. We're here today to try to make sure the next one is not treated like this or this doesn't happen. She don't know what happened yet, but hopefully we're going to be able to find out what happened. We're going to allow the Atlanta Alliance to speak next. Thank you. So first of all, I want to give my condolences again to you and to your family. Um, these kind of deaths happen all too often. And what we've seen in the Atlanta Alliance and working nationally on cases like this is that oftentimes it takes much too long for the families to find any resolution. Uh, we've been told that an autopsy, it's gonna take six weeks to get results. We've heard that before. Um, I'm working on another case right now for a young man who was murdered by the MARTA police named Osiris Bennett. His family has been waiting a year and has not seen the results of his autopsy. I don't want you and your family to have to go through that. We want, we want answers now. We want this investigation to be concluded speedily. We want all the answers that are, are given to be vetted through the right people within our government. We want these people to be held accountable. People shouldn't go into jail and then be found dead. Uh, he was only in jail this time for less than two weeks and then was found dead in his cell. This man was already injured from an altercation with the police. He should have been in the hospital. He deserved medical attention. And if he would have been in the hospital, I, I think he would still be alive today. It's because of all of the, the gaps in our system that allow people to get lost, to get injured. And we, we may never know what happened to him unless these people here keep on this case and keep on talking about it. And so we wanna just say, you know, we want, we want justice for Christian and we want it now and we're gonna keep talking about this until we get all the answers that we need. Um, and I just, um, we'll be here. We're gonna be here until we get some answers. Thank you. Yes, I just wanna say, as I've said before, to all of the stations, that I just wanna know what happened to my son. I wanna know, I mean, I've been here a week haven't spoken with anyone, tried to reach out, no one's been able to give me any answers, have no idea what happened. All I know is that I'm having my son's body shipped back to Houston uh, on today or tomorrow. We haven't confirmed it yet. And I, I just, as I've stated before, that it's, Christian is gone. It's an unfortunate thing, but I just want all the other Christians the Christians that's possibly yelling in the cell right now as we can hear them, or a Christian that's in that cell that's needing some help or needing some medication or needing some, um, even if just some, some medicine, they need to be in the hospital. I pray that there isn't another Christian lying on the floor unconscious 
uh, with no pulse. I pray that no other mother have to go through what we're experiencing. This has been a long journey. Christian was uh, came home on March the 15th, 2018, and six years to the day, March the 15th, 2024, my son was is not it was deceased. And unfortunately, as I said, he served our country. He came back this way. When he left, that's not who he who he was. So I just pray that some change take place. This is my battle right now. This is my heartache right now. But I'm sure there's some other mother, some other father, some other family that have experienced or is experiencing some mental health. Everybody, all of us out here, including the media, I'm sure someone you know, if it's not a family member, you're blessed. If it's but I'm sure there's someone in a, a family, a friend, someone you've come across, a co-worker, a church member, somebody's family member is dealing with mental health. It's not their fault. They're sick. I just it was diagnosed with breast cancer. Had I gone into the hospital and, and just for whatever reason, and they told me that they couldn't treat me because I wasn't diagnosed, then where would I be? My son was sick. He was diagnosed. He needed medicine, he needed treatment, he needed help. He was a veteran. He served our country. So I just think that I, I pray that um, the sheriff, you know, as we stand here, I pray that you never experience this in your family. I can't imagine someone coming into my house or on my property and dying and me not even thinking enough of the family to even give my condolences. The, the sheriff, the, uh, the, vet, the VA hospital, the, I'm, it's on the news. Everybody's seen it. it. It's been on Yahoo, every news, so I'm sure. And if you haven't seen it, now you can see it. And I hope that you, got, you guys make change and do something about this so that nobody else have to go through this. Thank you all. Uh, by law. That young man should have received treatment from the VA. He should have, no doubt about it. And I want to say this here to those who's watching out here today because many times people say, well, we don't know where to go. We don't know where to go to. We have an organization here in DeKalb County called Justice for Veterans. Uh, you can come see us. We'll help you. Uh, I was very disturbed by what you told me that he could not get a ride from the jail, am I correct? From the jail to the VA. From the jail to the VA, they wouldn't take him. That's sad. That's very sad. They wouldn't even give him a ride from the jail to the VA. We can't, we can't allow that to happen. We've got to do better. So if you're watching out here today, and you got a loved one that's suffering with mental illness that's a veteran, give us a call. We'll help you. I'm going to say it again. Give us a call. We'll help you. Because I hear way too often. I don't know who to call. Give us a call. Justice for veterans. No questions. Uh, the mother has said before that she tried to reach out to a lot of different local and state officials. Who did you try to reach out to with? I've been going through this since, um, and he started in Houston. So I've reached out to the VA in Houston. I've reached out to the congressman office, Al Green's office in Houston. I've reached out to, uh, for, in regards to a behavior flag that prevented my son from getting care. I, when he came here to Atlanta, I've reached out to uh, Congressman um, Warnoff's office. I've gone there. I've gone to Congressman Hank Johnson's office. The congressional that I filed to have him transported from the jail to the uh, hospital, to the VA hospital, was filed at, at Hank Johnson's office, and it was sent over to uh, Ms. Williams' office, and I never heard anything from it. Um, also, I've reached out to, I've come here, I've gone to uh, Ossoff's office, I've contacted them. I've gone to the sheriff's office here. They wouldn't allow me to speak with the sheriff. I spoke with uh, the director of mental health the last time Christian was in jail in, in December. He informed me that he was going to do a mental health evaluation, so I'd like to see the results of that. 
He also, I also spoke with the lieutenant. Uh, I don't have the names because I didn't come here prepared for that. I came to find some answers and to find out what was going on with my son. We also went to the, uh, spoke with the senator's office. Also, we've contacted the Washington, D.C., the 1-800 the, the number to the uh, White House. They transferred us to uh, the VA here in Atlanta. And, of course, that went nowhere. The VJOs. There's been many VJOs that have Christian was assigned to. Uh, the attorney that I had, attorney um, Shay Farley, if she law firm, failed my son, failed him. All we needed was for the for the judge to off to order that Christian go from the jail to the VA where a 1013 would be awaiting him. We tried it three times, and he every time he ran, he was sick. So because of that, no one would transport him. But they gave him a ride from this place with no pulse and took him to the hospital. When he needed that very same ride from this place to go to the VA with a pulse where he could still be alive. One other, one other thing that you need to know for the listeners, if you come to this jail right here, put on a crime, you can ask to go to the, uh, the veterans in court, and they'll arrange for you to go to veteran court if you're a veteran, depending on the, uh, the reason that you're in here. But you can go to the veterans court. There, there, can I interject there? Yeah. There is a veterans court, but Christian wasn't eligible for the veteran court because the, vet, the veteran court stated that he needed acute care. So they knew he was sick. The judges knew, veteran court knew, but it wasn't given to him. They expected me to arrange for someone to pick him up from here and take him to the jail, which I did. And she tried her best. But unfortunately, when he got to the VA, he ran. And officers, according to what she stated, two officers stood and watched him and told her that he ran down the hall and nobody did anything. But had he gotten transported with the, with the, from the jail with the officer, the same officers that pop, perhaps took him to the hospital or that one that stood at the door when he laid there with no um, on maximum support, with no um, organs functioning, but yet they still had a guard standing there, heart not beating on its own. So you believe he died in this jail? He left here with no pulse. With no pulse, that means you're dead. And this was what you feared? Yes. Yes. This very day, which didn't have to happen, 27-year-old, as I stated before, he served our country. He gave everything, did well. He left that military, came back a different person. So not only did he give himself, he gave his mind, because he came back without it. Where did he serve in? In Germany. How many years? Three and a half years. Three and a half. Three and a half. So what's your next step after today? My, my next step after today is to go and focus on funeral arrangements. I have not finalized any funeral arrangements because I've been trying to get answers here while I'm here. So I, that's the next step. I, and the one thing that I want to say also is that Christian was in jail for six months here, six and a half months, when we were trying to get him to the VA because allegedly he ran across all 12 lanes, six lanes, jumped the median, and then jumped, ran across the other six lanes. Running from the police is what they stated. And then once he got to the other side, allegedly he took his shoulder and ran into the police car. That's what the police report states. What my son said was something totally different. So if he did indeed run across, which the body cams should show, the cameras should show, if he did indeed run across all 12 lanes, that clearly lets you know that that person is either trying to commit suicide or they're sick. But instead, 
I'm sure if he did, the police was behind him. He was running from them. He was trained by the United States Army to defend himself. I'm sure they don't run to the enemy. They run away from the enemy or attack the enemies. Is there any mental health diagnosis you wanted to share with us? There are, there are some mental, mental health diagnoses. They're, they're public records. All of his, um, the, the police reports have all of it in there. They, they've stated that there's been um, mental health calls. So everything is documented. Everything is documented. Amos King, President of Justice for Veterans. Erica Schneider. E-R-I-C-A-S-C-H-N-E-I-D-E-R. -E -E and I'm with the Atlanta Alliance. And I did want to also respond quickly to the question that you had about what's next. I mean, I think for, for the family healing and trying to get answers and doing funeral arrangements. And, uh, you know, she unfortunately has to go back home, go back to Texas. But they have a community here in Atlanta of family, of friends, um, and of of this gentleman and of, of me and our organization who will continue to offer support and to chase down answers here as best we can. And so will I. Mom